Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about data types in VHDL. So in the previous video we have learned about data objects where each data object is used to hold its value, hold a value. So that value consists of set of values, a data object can hold a value that belongs to set of individual lot of values. Now a data object we have seen like a constant or a variable or a signal or it may be a file. So a, a data type is nothing but it may be for example we can take an integer. We can take an integer. So integer may be a data type. Integer may be a data type. Similarly float may be a data type. Okay like in your C language how we can say an integer, float, character, string, array. So here also in data types we have integer scalar, float. So like that we are having several data types. So for example, integer is nothing but it is a predefined data type. Integer is a predefined data type. Predefined data type that can hold the values from minus 2 power 31 minus 1 to 2 power 31 minus 1 minus 2 power 31 minus 1 to plus 2 power 31 minus 1. So and along with this one more is also there like a boolean. Boolean is also a predefined pre data type. Boolean is also a predefined data type. So boolean is nothing but it may be true false. It may be true or false that may be 1 and 0. Okay, in, in Boolean we can write it as logic 1 and logic 0 that means true or false. So along with these we are also having predefined operators, predefined operators. So operators are nothing but we may have and operator, or operator, not, xor, xnor, nand and nor, nand and nor. So these are the predefined operators. We have predefined Boolean functions. We have predefined integer functions also. We are having in the data types. So in general, the data types are broadly classified into so these types. Data types are classified into data types are classified into first one predefined data type this is what we have discussed in the previous slide predefined data type and second one scalar data type scalar data type third one composite data type composite data type Fourth, axis data type, axis data type, and fifth and last one is nothing but file type, file type. So predefined data type is nothing but an integer is a predefined data type, boolean is a predefined data type, and uh, we have seen just operators, operators and or not get all these operators are predefined data types, and predefined data types will also have two more like a bit and bit vector bit and bit vector so bit and bit vector is represent used to represent a variable that may be a single bit or a group of bits single bit or a group of bits if it is represented as a bit then it is a single bit if it is represented with a bit vector then that it is then that is having a group of numbers so from a minimum range of 0 to 8 0 to 9 like that Coming to scalar data type, a scalar data type values belonging to those types appear in the sequential order. So they appear in sequential order. Scalar data type appear in the sequential order. So here again scalar data types are classified into four different types, enumeration data type, integer data type, physical data type and floating point data types. So those four comes under this scalar data type and composite data type these are composed of elements of single type 
of single type or elements of different types elements of different types that is composite type and access type these provide access to objects of a given type so these access data type will provide access to the particular value in the data type and file type these provide access to the objects that contain a sequence of values in the given type so in the file we are having sequence of data in this we are having uh, one read operation to from this particular sequence of values okay so now we are going to see what do you mean by predefined data type and what do you mean by scalar data type here <clears throat> so as i told you predefined data type predefined data type so in predefined data type we are having four different modules we are going to explain here one is integer second one boolean third bit and fourth one is bit vector bit and bit vector so here we can also write this bit as std logic and fourth one bit vector as std logic underscore vector std underscore logic underscore vector so bit can be represented as std underscore logic and bit vector is represented as std underscore logic underscore vector okay so we know very well integer is nothing but normally it is having a range from 2 power minus 31 to 1 uh, minus 2 power 31 minus 1 to 2 power 31 minus 1 2 power 31 minus 1 so this is the integer range that we can use in the VHDL code and boolean just now we have seen which is nothing but on and off or 1 and 0 or you can say true false true or false so bit bit vector suppose if you want to say x x is nothing but here it may be a mode like input mode or output mode and this is example and this is consisting of std underscore logic std underscore logic this is one example and another example the same x can also be treat, uh, represented as x in std underscore logic underscore vector std underscore logic underscore vector so in the first case in the first example x is nothing but it is an input mode or input port consisting of only single bit see here it is not vector just std underscore logic this std underscore logic we will say x it may be a represented as 0 or 1 only one bit of operation one bit of information is there for this particular x variable and the same x is having now input port it is represented as input port and now it is having a logic vector of something like a 7 down to 0 7 down to 0 so here it is a vector array or an array consisting of 0 to 7 0 to 7 so the x is nothing but input mode and it may be varying from 7 to down that means x of 7 x of 6 x of 5 and so on will be having this value up to x of 0 total 8 values will come so including 0 up to 7 we will be having total 8 different values that means the same x is having multiple values by taking vector operation okay that is what boolean uh, sorry bit and bit vectors and coming to the second one scalar type scalar type so scalar type as i said these are composed of elements of a single type are elements of different types composer of single type are elements of the different type so <clears throat> most of the scalar type operations depending upon the relational operators relational operators or it may be uh, less than greater than you can represent like that okay so there are again four different types of scalar types there are four types of scalar type they are they are first one enumeration 
scalar data type second integer scalar data type third one physical and last one floating point physical and floating point so enumeration data type integer type physical type and floating point type so these four are important and can be considered as a scalar type okay so now coming to enumeration data type i will give you the examples of each and everything so first one enumeration data type which is a scalar type so enumeration type declares defines and declaration defines a type that has a set of user defined values consisting of identifiers and character letters so it defines a type that has a set of that has a set of user defined values consisting of identifiers identifiers and character literals and character literals okay so enumeration data type is nothing but nothing but it, it defines a type that has a set of user defined values that has a set of user defined values consisting of identifiers and character letters so character letters normally character values and identifiers we know uh, basic identifiers and expansion identifiers okay those are identifiers so for example example type mvl is u 0 comma 1 comma z type mvl is u 0 1 z or it may be type arid operation arithmetic operation is micro op range now the range is varying from add to div that means addition to division <clears throat> this is scalar enumeration type coming to integer type we already know very well about integer integer just it writes it defines the whether the given number is integer or not so second one integer type so integer type defines a type whose set of values fall within a specified interval so specified interval i told you already what is the interval minus 2 power 31 minus 1 to 2 power 31 minus 1 so example of this integer is type index is range 0 to 15 or we can also say type world length is range is range 31 down to 0 31 down to 0 okay similarly we can have a lot of examples with respect to this integer so third one which is nothing but physical and floating point so coming to physical physical what do you mean by that physical data type physical data type so in physical data type it contains the values that represent measurements that represents measurements okay like units you can write the units like amperes volts nano amperes micro amperes so all the types of physical quantity and their units can be represented in this physical data type so it contains 
it contains values that represent that represent measurement of some physical quantity some physical quantity okay like like length time voltage or it may be a current okay so any type of physical measurement can be considered here and how it is represented so example here it is type type is there always the data type type current so current we are taking a data type uh, type data type is integer which is ranging from range 0 to the example 1 e 9 okay units this is nanoampere and microampere is equal to 1000 nanoamperes and similarly two more lines milliamperes is equal to 1000 microamperes and ampere is equal to 1000 milliampere 1000 milliampere so and units so such type of operations that come under this physical types physical type and we have last one this which is nothing but floating point type floating point floating point data type floating point data type has a set of values it has it has a set of values given range of real numbers given range of real numbers so here type for example type ttl voltage type ttl voltage is range minus 5.52 minus 1.4 see here the values are represented in floating floating data type okay or else another example type real data is range 0 0.0 to 13 point something like 9 okay so here we are taking a value we are taking an object data object like a ttl voltage or real data that will be represented in terms of float type so here type defines here the based upon the value those values come under floating type okay and we are left with two more here composite data type axis data type and file data type that we will discuss in the next video thank you